Hi, and welcome to this episode of Cisco Chat Live. I'm Efrat Noy, Head of Market Development for Cisco Investments, guest moderator for this week's chat on Tap into Innovation with Cisco Investments in 2021. Before we get started, a reminder that we'll be taking your questions at the end of the show. So please, please, please post your questions on all the channels that you're watching us on, on Cisco.com, LinkedIn, YouTube, and please tag us with hashtag Cisco chat uh, on Twitter and all the other channels as well. So with me here today are Pradeep Panyadi, Relationship Manager at Cisco Investments. Hi, Fraud. Great to be here. Thank you for being here. And also Luca Janaski, Market Development Manager at Cisco Investments. Hi, Efrad. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited for uh, both of you to be here, and it's a really exciting chat. But before we delve into it, let me give you a little bit of an overview of Cisco Investments and really why we're here today and how can you benefit from Cisco Investments. Um, and so next slide, please. Cisco Investments is Cisco's venture capital we as an organization invest in startups that are external to Cisco, and we do that in order to get a glimpse into innovation that exists outside the company. We try to look at all the technology that's going to uh, shape the face of IT in the upcoming years, two, three, five, maybe even 10 years down the road. And so our investments really help us understand that and bring the, that innovation into the hands of our customers. And we'll talk about that a little bit in this chat. We're probably one of the most active corporate venture capitalists in the world. We invest somewhere between 200 and $300 million on an annual basis. We have a very, very wide portfolio of over 120 companies in our portfolio in the areas all the way ranging from core enterprise networking through security and all the way into collaboration, all the areas that Cisco is interested in. We also are invested in 55 Limited, we have limited partnership positions and 55 other funds that actually gives us visibility into hundreds of more startups that make us understand what's up and coming. And then lastly, we're a global investor. So although we're headquartered in Silicon Valley, we look for innovation anywhere it may be. That includes areas such as Israel, uh, uh, EMEA, Singapore, Australia, India, wherever innovation may be, we try to find it and bring that um, into our fold. Next slide, please. So 2020 has been a pretty awkward year for most of us, uh, pretty challenging to say the least. But in fact, 2020 was actually a really, really great year for Cisco Investments. We have several, over 10 new venture investments this year uh, in companies such as Theta Lake, which you'll prob probably hear about from Pradeep later on, isovalence, sea lights, a lot of really interesting companies in, in the areas that we believe are going to shape the future of IT, AI, DevOps, cloud, et cetera. Next slide, please. And then we actually documented all of that, or we spoke about our experiences in 2020 in our 2020 year in review, which we've published a few weeks ago. Um, there we spoke about you know, our leadership gave insights into how they saw that year and what they're anticipating into 2021. Uh, we spoke about our investments and delved a little bit deeper into them. We spoke about our acquisitions in 2020, but then we also gave a glimpse into uh, portfolio development and market development, which is what we're gonna be talking about here. Market development uh, is really all about engaging with our customer base, with our partner base and the VC ecosystem to really bring everything together and to bring startup innovation into the hands of our customers in a very meaningful way. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, today with Luca and Pradeep. So let's get started with that. So, um, you know, Luca, we, you and I speak to customers day in and day out, right? We speak to CIOs and many different verticals. Um, many different regions, but let's maybe take a step back and and let me ask you this: like, why why would a customer care in the first place about engaging with the VC ecosystem in general? Like, why would they care to engage with a venture capitalist? Yeah, it's a great question, Efrat. Um, I would say you know mainly for for three reasons. 
The first one being access to innovation. Um, we have been uh, in the venture investment game for more than three decades. We have invested in several hundreds of startups alongside some of the main venture capital funds out there. And you'd be surprised. Uh, we talked to a lot of customers, even pretty sizable enterprises, and we find that very few of them have the same kind of access to the startup ecosystem. So through us, CIOs, CTOs, but also you know practitioners in general, they can get visibility to the startups that not only we have invested in, but also the ones that we are potentially looking as, as investments. So I would say it is really a sneak peek into the future uh, for them. The second reason is uh, knowledge. Uh, customers can hear from us what is that we see in the market, what are some of the uh, dynamics, the trends that we see happening out there in the technology landscape. And uh, what is unique to us, though, uh, not only we bring that perspective from the lens of you know, um, strategic investors, but we also combine that with the depth of knowledge that our team has. And th this depth is the result of the fact that we are very specialized by domain, so our folks go can go deep into their domain of competence, and they work so very closely with our business unit counterparts. So we also bring that, that knowledge to the table that is, that is really very, very unique. Um, the third point and last one is uh, networking, right? Customers can really leverage us to connect to some of their peers in different industries. They can trade notes with them on challenges and, and find out that, you know, maybe those people in different industries are confronted with, with similar uh, pain points and challenges. That's, that's a really a very important element of the community. And there's, there's more to it. They, through us, customers can reach out to, you know, subject matter experts at Cisco as well as they can leverage, I would say, the, the entire corporate development team. You know, Cisco Investments is, is part of CoreDev, and corporate development comprises M&A and investment. So through us, they really have, have a door to, to the world of CoreDev at Cisco. Right. And so, so you're saying that customers get the access to the startup ecosystem, so access to innovation for yes. problems today. Uh, we're we're actually you know bringing knowledge to, to the table, and then the networking aspect kind of bring, brings it all together. So we'll, we'll delve into some some of this later on. But I want to say, look, okay, so what's unique specifically about Cisco as a strategic investor? Um, I would say you know the, the customer network um, probably is it, really the great competitive advantage that um, a strategic investor like Cisco has. I mean, in, in today's world, everyone is connected. Uh, so all investors have deep Rolodex and, and great customer access. But uh, the deep access into the market that we have, uh, thanks to the 18,000 sellers that uh, connect with customers day in and day out, it is really unique uh, to, to an investor like Cisco. And not only does it generate uh, value for, for uh, the customers themselves, but also, of course, for for our startups, uh, the startups that we have in our portfolio and that we have invested in. Yeah, so so Cisco does you provide that that unique aspect. You know, again, not only by Cisco Investments being part of corporate development, but just by us scanning the landscape, right, and providing that innovation and, and, and the knowledge to our to our customer base. So so we understand the why, but then like let's double click on that. So what should a customer do? Like so, what should a customer expect? from us when we engage with them? Uh, yeah, look, we, we engage with customers uh, in different ways, um, from a one-to-one -one basis to a many-to-many. -many. And I would say the nature of the engagement can be very different as well. So we can have a tactical engagement or a more strategic one. But um, before going into that, let me expand on, expand on a point that I, that I think it's important. So when we talk to a customer, first of all, we like to understand what are the customers care about, for example, uh, everyone is looking at cloud, is migrating to cloud today. So we, we like, so that's a given, right? Uh, but we like to double click on that and, and go one or two levels deeper and understand, okay, what is in their cloud journey or of their cloud architecture that they struggle with? Is it resource management? Is it observability? Is it, you know, multi-cloud networking? So we like to really understand what is that they care about. And based on that customer needs and, and that understanding, we then are able to identify what is the best kind of engagement uh, for, that, for that specific customer, as well as what are some of the technologies that we might have in our investment portfolio that would address the customer's pain point, right? So yeah. it's really about um, 
understanding and making sure that we comprehend what what is that they need. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you and I are, are in these conversations all, all the time, and we dig pretty deep into a customer's, uh, you know, environment. You know, certainly their certainly their priorities, and you know that matchmaking it with that consultative approach really lends itself to pretty fruitful engagements. And you know, Pradeep, it reminds me, you know, you you and I are, end up in being in very unique situations. I want to say even creative situations with customers uh -huh. will end up um, recommending companies in our portfolio that, you know, we haven't really thought about. So how about you share some of those examples? Because I think they're pretty unique. Yeah, yeah. And you use the right term, right? Consultative approach. Um, and that's really come to fore a couple of times. Uh, so I'll give you two examples. Uh, the first one, uh, a retail customer of ours announced the plan to launch vaccine clinics in store to administer COVID vaccine doses, right? So this is a great opportunity now for that customer to not only implement, let's say, a, a platform like Theatro uh, for, for their frontline productivity and curbside pickup, right, to satisfy their retail customers, but also work with uh, another company of ours, uh, Lumen Health, for their patient scheduling reminders and intake forms. In fact, we are presenting to that customer in a few days, thanks to uh, our, our sellers, right? Uh, a second example is where a customer from one of your own tables, in fact, met with three of our companies, uh, Theta Lake, Woodle, and Watfix. Now, what struck most for us was where the pandemic forced them to tighten purse strings. They actually found a digital adoption platform immediately relevant to their enterprise and in-house you know, application end users. So the, the, I'm presenting these two examples because one, uh, in the first case, is they're actually disrupting their digital innovation, uh, digital transformation. In the second case, it's digital transformation. So both apply. Uh, and, and one has an immediate effect and one has, uh, you know, both immediate and, and long-term impact to their strategic growth. So it's, it's, uh, these are great opportunities. And uh, Pradeep, to, to build on what you, you just said, you know, the exercise of uh, looking at um, customer use cases that, that we can address, we do that uh, not only in a kind of a reactive mode, but also more of a, in a more structured way on a recurrent basis with some of these customers, right? I can give you, uh, Efrat, a few uh, example of, uh, examples of that as well. We, um, uh, two banks uh, headquarters in, in U.S., uh, one a retail and the other one an investment bank. Uh, we have, you know, a regular quarterly touch point, and we do exactly that. Um, they, you know, expose us to, to their uh, challenges and, and pain points, and we go through our portfolio and try to figure out if there are uh, solutions that, that might, be, might be interesting there. And uh, as a result uh, of a similar conversation, we recently hosted um, one insurance customers for a full morning where we introduced them to, to five of our portfolio companies in different domains and found solution that that really uh, address uh, those those issues. And Pradeep, you might have some some examples uh, you want to add as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in in this instance, uh, after one of another of market development teams roundtables, we actually followed up with the VP of innovation at a healthcare company. Right now, we're getting industry specific. In addition to sharing areas of needs, likes, interests, etc., he also shared the names of companies he was looking at in the patient journey space. So, what we learned there was actually let me take a step back. Uh, while we at Cisco consider end user journey a huge area of interest, right beyond chatbots, it's about bringing intelligent experiences across multiple industries to end users. So in healthcare, that manifests in the form of a patient journey, right? Where subtext in the journey path are of strong interest. For example, a patient communication for scheduling needs varies from virtual care workflow, which could vary from a post-care support, right? In the form of paperwork, billing, follow-on, and so on. The AI that's required to implement each node in the journey is actually extremely contextual. And that requires independent consideration. So the outcome of that engagement was actually twofold. From that customer, we learned about their patient journey thesis, and this part is critical. They actually validated our investment because they implemented one of the portfolio companies I mentioned earlier, Luma Health. And second, he actually introduced us to two startups that he was uh, working with closely in the patient journey space. 
that our healthcare industry team thought were extremely relevant and interesting. And we would like to keep in touch with those uh, startups and see where those partnership discussions evolve. That is learning that can come, again, thanks to our sellers, only through our customers. Yeah. So, so there's like this tactical piece. And I mean, I guess what we're getting at here is that the dialogue is really, really important, right? So sometimes this uh, kind of consultative approach comes into fruition where, you know, we know our portfolio companies the best. And so we can identify where the use cases would match our portfolio companies or what priorities and initiatives would match some of our portfolio companies. But then there's that that um, kind of structured, more structured elements where the customer would actually say, ah, aha, I, I can see something here. This is interesting for me. And just by way of exposure, uh, it just lends to a lot of different um, uh, meaningful engagements. But you kind of touched a little bit on this, Pradeep, around around the knowledge, right, and around the the vetting vetting the theses, right, or vetting our ideas of of the market, which which you spoke about in in you know in the healthcare uh, customer example. But you know, Luca, you know, we kind of do this in also we do that in a more structured manner as well. So, how about you give some of the viewers an idea around how that looks like? Yeah. So. Um, I would say, the, the, you know, we spoke a lot about, you know, um, some of these tactical engagements, right? We look at the, the use case and, and we, we try to find, you know, the right solution for, for the right problem. We also have some, some uh, you know, strategic kind of engagements with our customers. And um, uh, in essence, you know, customers uh, reach out to us because they, they want to understand, you know, what are some of the uh, things that we see happening in the market? Uh, what are some of the, as I mentioned, trends? Uh, that that uh, we we explore when we go out and look for startups and um, uh, other instances, customers are really interested in in understanding basically where is Cisco putting its money, right? They do see us as a as a driving force uh, in the market, so they they consider us as a proxy for what's going to happen next in in technology. Uh, we recently had uh, a chat with a um, CTO at one of the top healthcare providers. And we we talked about you know um, multi cloud. He wanted uh, he wanted our perspective because he's now uh, the company is one is is an only one cloud provider, and they're thinking of okay, what would it look like? What would it mean for me to to go to to have a multi cloud footprint? So we brought in uh, our perspective, and and frankly, uh, we learned a lot uh, from from the customers as well. Um, so whenever we have this kind of conversation. Uh, it helps us also challenge some of our assumption and some of our thesis on a specific space. So it's it's certainly a learning opportunity uh, for us as well. Yeah, yeah, and like and like I was saying earlier, you know, the dialogue um, sometimes lends to a very tangible result, right? Like, what can I solve today? But then again, the knowledge sharing. I think many people don't uh, don't really think about. Uh, one learns from from each other, right? How how much we learn from from our customers when we look at the market and we try to validate some of our opinions there. And so it's it's I, I don't know. I, I always whenever we engage with with customers, one to one, one to many, you know, we there's always like this uh, very fruitful type of conversation, right? Um, and especially you know, especially when we do it on a on a continuous basis, um, and and also in kind of our customer roundtables, which is kind of that many to many uh, environment, yeah. which we which we started out, you know, quite a few months ago, it's been, just been going great. Um, Luca, you know, you've been running some of these uh, customer roundtables. Um, how, you know, tell us a little bit about what we've learned from from that engagement. Yeah, that, that is that, that is an example. The roundtable is an example of this, uh, you know, many uh, to many uh, engagement uh, that, that we have. Um, and uh, uh, that probably is when, you know, the power of, of the network uh, comes to fruition uh, for, for our customers. And I must say, while we work with, uh, with tens of customers, we have what we call a customer advisory board uh, that is basically composed of a subset of, of uh, customer executives that we work more closely with. And once a customer opts in to be part of uh, the advisory board, he or she becomes uh, a dolly fat part of a community. And we do activities to engage with the community. 
uh, we have uh, we've had several of these um, roundtable discussions that that you uh, talked about. Those are um, you know, but we're just putting together folks from very different industries, uh, typically in, in similar roles, so that they can learn from each other what are uh, what what their peers are confronted with uh, in, in very different business contexts. We also do uh, virtual events, uh, uh, sorry, social events today, virtual, uh, unfortunately. And just to give you an idea, uh, we're also thinking of, you know, potentially having a, a, a online portal where, you know, all these uh, folks that are part of our customer advisory board could talk to each other and, and, and learn from each other as a sort of a continuation to, to our um, activities and, and engagement. I hope that that answered your your question. Yeah, yeah, it does. And in you know, it's it was almost like and every time we we have these conversations, they're very one they're they're illuminating just to see how our customers think and and it's almost like a cathartic experience where everyone starts to yes. like yes. unload and and ask questions and um it's it's really I mean you we find out a lot of different things from those conversations um as well. So I think um you know the viewers here really understand what is the benefit for you know, as a customer, uh, what is the benefit of engaging with uh, with Cisco Investments, and, and what can we really bring to the table? Uh, and again, and, and and it is mutual. But let's maybe take a step back a little bit and talk about uh, just Cisco as a strategic investor. Like, you know, why would Cisco even care about the startup ecosystem? I mean, I, I kind of alluded to it in in the beginning, but let's let's maybe double click on that. And Pradeep, you know, you deal with these portfolio companies day in and day out, you bring them into mm -hmm. Cisco's fold, uh, you help them out, you see how they're, uh, how they operate. Um, and you work quite closely with, with our investors in the collaboration DevOps and data analytics and data and analytics space. So um, help us understand or help the viewers understand, you know, what, why would Cisco care? Like, why would we invest in these companies? Yeah. A million dollar question, right? <laughs> so, uh, Cisco takes a multifaceted approach to, let's say, a strategy in aligning with our customers with five pillars of innovation. Where we come in, the investment pillar is an area that's booming, like right? growing 10x in over a decade. Um, and specifically, the corporate VC deals have quadrupled from 2011 to 2019. In fact, according to a recent pitch book uh, report, uh, the, from 2019 to 2020, the uh, corporate VC investments have uh, uh, gone up 35%. Right? And 34% of that was directed towards IT and uh, enterprise startups. So how do we actually sift through all the noise and identify companies that matter to Cisco and more importantly, to our customers, right? So for Cisco, the three keys to strategic investing with sponsorship from our domain leaders across Collab, Network, uh, security, cloud, et cetera, without whom we, can, we can't make this, are thematic, transitional, and transformational. So we invest in these companies that are not only core to Cisco, but also help shape Cisco's future from AI to DevOps. Um, our ability to work well with disruptive startups and emerging technologies is the reason for our continued success over decades. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. It it does, and so help us, um, you know, expand on that, and uh, how, like, how does this all kind of come together? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so I'll start by expanding on the three keys that I mentioned, right? So the first one, thematic. Um, in order to find key market opportunities, we need the ability to gain early and critical insights into next-gen markets. Um, for example, Cisco was an investor in over 20 companies before entering the IoT market with Jasper acquisition. Um, another example is Cisco invested in analytics for about half a decade before acquiring AppD, right? So that's thematic. The transitional piece, technology transitions in Cisco's markets, uh, they can have a measurable impact uh, on, on our growth. The investments actually help Cisco track and later move on key transitions in our core markets. Um, a great example is SD-WAN, right? While, while we still have their offering, we invested in Volo Cloud and acquired Webtella because we saw the growth opportunities with Webtella. Investing actually helped us gain that uh, knowledge. Now, the third piece is transformational. Through Cisco's ISV-focused solution program, or Solution Plus program, we play a variety of crucial roles with our end customers. Now, the thematic prepares us for market opportunities, 
through transitional investments, we are agile and relevant. Combine all of that with Cisco's global perspective, it yields unique opportunities for us to innovate through internal business, business agreements and join go to market. So while we may not see a use case for production integrations today, but where there is value and relevance as it relates to the future company roadmap, we think it's worth observing industries as they evolve. Right, so we invest in those companies that we believe are interesting, right? We bring them into Cisco's fold. We see how they can operate and how they react to market opportunities um, and the access that Cisco gives them and, uh, and the kind of the follow-on really gives us that opportunity to observe and therefore to gain a, a lot of insights. Am I, is that correct, Pradeep? Yep, yep, yep absolutely. Right, and so with that, with that said, right, there's, there must be a lot of Cisco plus portfolio company solutions in the market, right? Because some of them, as, as we've heard already, uh, really solve critical customer pain points, customer use cases, you know, uh, advance customers' priorities. So um, talk to us a little bit about, about how, how do we do that? Like, how do we marry a Cisco solution plus a portfolio company and then kind of br bring that into the hands of our customers? Yeah. yeah. Um, so just to summarize, right, we, we track important trends, we use the investments to get into view of the market and create a proof of value, and then we use strategic partnerships to go to market. Right? In truth, none of this is possible without the business units uh, and our sales leaders. So collaboratively, we build and bring our, what we call a better together story to our customers through the Solution Plus program, which is, you know, a rigorous ISV ecosystem onboarding program uh, for the benefit of our customers, right? So we vetted them out, they can sign on Cisco's paper, and we are the first level of support, right? Um, a few examples, Involvio, a student engagement platform, uh, working with Cisco WebEx, we've solved problems for hundreds of higher ed customers together. Uh, Cohesity, an enterprise data management as a service platform, and Cisco Hyperflex, uh, UCS. NS1, uh, the next-gen Converge Application Networking Solution and Cisco Umbrella. They've, in fact, just scratched the surface. What they can do with, you know, our other uh, domain units, I mean, sky's the limit for them, right? So the benefit for our customers is actually evident where there is a better together story. Nevertheless, our sellers understand very well the power of bringing innovation to their customers, even when there isn't a strong tie-in. Yeah, I mean, you touched on a really important point here, Pradeep, and I think it's really important for our viewers to to note that that uh, I mean, we work a lot with our with our sellers, but the sellers are really the front line of all of this, right? So if you're a Cisco customer, like look no further than than the seller, um, because you know, really, the, what they're trying to do is 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 help you, um, and oftentimes they they come to us, right, Pradeep? You talk to them quite a bit mm -hmm. and find all these use cases. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, you know, let me give you a few examples of how things work out. Um, I'll give a shout out to our channel partners, right? And Cisco, if nothing else, has award-winning channel partners. Um, one such partner with a presence in APJ asked to bring Gong.io, a conversational AI platform for sellers, uh, to a customer EBC. And it turns out they brought a contingent of about, you know, 10 or 12 customers from APJ, and all of them were kind of, you know, mind blown about how, you know, Gong could help bring intelligence into their sales process, especially in light of COVID, right? Um, another example is where a seller brought us not only a customer to the round table, but the same customer wanted to get to know more about hyper-personalization. And so working with the seller, we brought Action IQ in front of them. I, uh, to talk about position marketing and ingesting, you know, vast amounts of data. Uh, the third example, and you know, this is one of my favorites, to show that it's actually two-way, right? Working with our sellers, we were able to bring uh, both a data robot and again Theatro into conversations where data robot and Theatro have a strong presence with their customers and Cisco sellers, uh, you know. We want to work hand in glove with them and maximize you know, the value that Cisco can bring independently and the portfolio company can bring independently, right? But 
clubbing these two opportunities together, clubbing these two platforms together, that was one of the best discussions I've had. And we still continue to have those discussions. So for our customers engaging with Cisco, the strategy is actually one plus one is three. From tracking best of breed to solving unexpected challenges to actually creating a competitive advantage for themselves. It's, we would love the opportunity to show, work with our sellers and show our customers how they can create this edge. And, you know, COVID, if nothing else, taught us that, you know, we have to, uh, you know, think and move on a dime. Think on our feet and move on a dime. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, again, our, our sellers are, are just fantastic and they, and they do get so creative. And so I, I guess the message here is like, well, look, no, look no further because your Cisco account manager, client exec or client director will be the best address for innovation sourcing. Um, you know, they will find those creative solutions and they, and again, they oftentimes come to, 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 to us, to, you know, certainly to me, to Luca, to Pradeep, uh, and our counterparts on innovation sourcing based on what you tell them, right? So having, again, we're all kind of, uh, consultants here, uh, really to make the best, uh, and the most meaningful experience for you. Um, so I guess that's Cisco. So I guess, you know, what I what I always tell customers, and, and again, and our sellers are are um, are kind of part of that is you you really can't go wrong with engaging with Cisco Investments, right? Because you know if if something ends up being meaningfully there in terms of a portfolio company introduction, um, or you know kind of solving for a specific priority or, or use case, that's fantastic. But if not then it's an educational experience, right? And that education, what we encourage all our customers to do is have that on a recurring basis, right? It's not like a one-time download. Uh, education is always there. Innovation always comes in. There's you know tons of new investments uh, coming in for us and for other venture capitalists. And so um, what we encourage all our customers to do is to keep tabs on that and always be in this kind of learning mode. As, and as Luca was saying, right, the structured engagement really becomes very, very important. Uh, we have a lot of customers doing that uh, with us and it's just uh, enlightening for, again, for, for, for all of us. So with that said, you know, guys, what would you recommend our viewers and our customers doing? I'll let you go first, pretty. <laughs> uh, please send us a pipeline. And what that basically means is let us know about the startups you're working with. Uh, I want to call back uh, I want to recall the uh, uh, the healthcare provider example I said, where he introduced us to two startups. Those conversations are, you know, enriching for us, uh, and so we can actually turn around and better serve you both in terms of partnership and in terms of investing in the right kind of companies. And on my side, I would say, Efrat, you, you touched on that, right? You can't go wrong with engaging with us. So I would say, uh, reach out to us. Um, we can understand, uh, you know, set up 30 minutes, one hour meeting, understand what are your priorities and uh, what we can do for you. Um, so, but, but we also mentioned the customer advisory board on, on that one, probably with a, a little bit more prescriptive in terms of who we like to recruit. So if you are a CTO or a CIO or a CISO and you would like to be part of a community and get to know uh, other people in, in, uh, in similar roles uh, across the globe, again, uh, re reach out to us and, and we can talk about a lot of things um, you can learn from uh, hopefully from us but but also from uh, all the other members of, of the community that you know like like yourselves are, are driving uh, the transformation uh, initiatives uh, at their companies so um, in a nutshell just just reach out to us and, and we'll figure the, the the way forward together yeah and we will provide at the end of this um, at the end of the Cisco chat um, the uh, the link or the email uh, for you to uh, to get in touch with us. Also, very very important, and this is actually a good segue into our uh, um, viewer questions. Um, one of the people um, here on the um, on the chat has asked, "How do we get in touch with you?" So um, uh, it's work with Cisco Investments at cisco.com, and again, we'll we'll provide that at the end of this webinar or at the end of this Cisco chat. But also have a look at our uh, at our website, ciscoinvestments.com. It has all our portfolio there. It has all our um, our, our people there. You'll get to uh, to see us and the rest of our team, our our investors or our our domain leads, uh, as well as our leadership team. 
Uh, there you'll find a lot of blogs, a lot of content that we create around what we're seeing in the market. So just going into that uh, website and to our website is, um, is a really great um, start to engage with us. Um, so with that said, because it was a question from um, one of our viewers, uh, I have a ton of, of questions from our, uh, our viewers. And so Luca and Pradeep, uh, how about we address um, some of those? So one of the questions that keeps on coming back is, uh, is actually, let me, uh, let me get to this one. Uh, Alan on Cisco.com is asking, what goes into a, a decision to take a company uh, that we have invested in and turn that into a company we will acquire? So let me actually kind of maybe rephrase the question because I think it's, it's actually twofold. So let's not invest, in, let's not um, uh, confuse investment and, and acquisitions. Investments are, again, strategic investments, acquisitions are ones, companies that we actually take in and bring into, into Cisco's fold um, as a Cisco asset. Um, when we invest in a company, there's, there are many considerations of when uh, or how we, we invest. First and foremost, as Pradeep mentioned, um, it has to align with Cisco's strategy and it has to align with Cisco's uh, BU and, and, and product line. And, and every business unit, I mean, Cisco is a public company. You can check out all the areas that we care about in IT. Uh, but every um, um, organization would have their own uh, view of the market and what do they define as as important. And so uh, we as Cisco Investments bring those uh, companies into our BU uh, and they actually get to weigh in pretty heavily on, on whether that's interesting to us. So alignment uh, really, really matters. Uh, from a stage perspective, because that's um, uh, also a question that was asked here, we like to find companies already with product market fit, um, ones that are already selling in the market, um, and ones that we can actually bring in with kind of tangible uh, results, uh, tangible revenue, um, ones that, again, would fit with kind of the, I want to say the enormity of, uh, of Cisco. Um, other than that, um, me, same as many other VCs, you know, we look for great teams, we look for founders that have a vision, that are hungry, uh, and are really willing to, uh, to do the work in order to, to grow. Because as strategic investors, uh, the financial return is important to us, uh, but the strategic nature of the investment is as important. And we really see this as two sides of the same coin, right? Because if a company will grow and become very prominent in IT, um, that will return financial, I'm sorry, that, that will return financially, but then it will also be very relevant for, for Cisco as, as a company and um, one that we may want to partner with or potentially uh, even acquire. Uh, again, acquisitions have um, are a separate uh, kind of uh, conversation that we may want to have, and I'd rather not touch on that uh, in this in this webinar. Uh, Pradeep, anything to add? Because you work with ABUs quite a bit. Yeah, I think you touched upon the most important pieces um, for our thematic investments, of course, and I'm only going to address the investments piece. Uh, for the thematic investments, of course, you know, they may not align with our uh, domains today. They may not align with the markets we are in today, but then that's, that's why they are thematic. But across the board, there are some critical, how do I put this, uh, characteristics of a startup that we invest in. A, they have to have product market fit, right? Um, you have to be, a, there has to be a bottoms approach, approach right? Uh, and I think I read this in, uh, in one of the uh, BVP newsletters recently. It's like layering cake. So as you grow, as you go up from your SMB, uh, you know, direct, uh, customer base and you go up mid-market, go upstream, the, the way you are, your product is built to satisfy the most, uh, you know, preliminary primal uh, value and how you build features on top of that to address a, not only growth for the company, but, you know, uh, pain points, business challenges, we need to see that. You know, that, that part is critical. We don't want you to be, you know, too far ahead of yourselves. Um, so product market fit, companies that are going upstream, uh, companies that are following a bottoms approach, uh, you know, strong founders, of course, uh, 
we do you know look for lead investors like right? um cisco we we prefer not to lead uh, unless you know where there are uh, you know core opportunities but we look for lead investors um you know that are that are currently at the cap table um and let's see what else um yeah and and an enterprise focus as you go up we want to know what your plan is uh to scale through you know your channel program your partner program we want to know you know how you're building out your sales team we want to know you know what your plan for enterprise tech is because enterprise tech is a totally different beast but that but then again that's where we come in right yeah. that's where that's when working with cisco investments kind of gives that extra edge right i wanted to i want you to add something it, it is very important also for us to understand what is that we can provide uh when we become a uh, shareholder in, in one of these startups and uh try to match that with what the startup need right so um strategic investors typically come in as you guys have mentioned uh because of the uh array of resources that they can provide to these startups so it's very important to to identify the the, the perfect match there with what we have to offer and what the startup might need now or as, as they mature yep all right, uh, let me move, uh, just for interest of time, let me move to actually a really interesting question from Lord on Cisco.com. Uh, Lord is saying, I am an African-American and the founder of a telehealth and telebehavioral health startup. Um, how can Cisco Investments help? So first, Lord, I'm actually very excited about your question. Thank you for, for asking. Uh, we actually, are very interested, especially in diverse founders. So please uh, get in touch with us. Again, work with ciscoinvestments.com or reach out to me directly uh, on LinkedIn or, or wherever. We will provide that at the end of the uh, um, at the end of the webinar or the Cisco chat. Um, Pradeep, do you want to talk a little bit about telehealth and telebehavior? Yeah, because you are looking into the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, and you know, great question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, the transformational piece that I talked about, right? We work with startups that we don't invest in sometimes, right? As long as there is relevance for our, you know, industry leaders, as long as we are able to build on top of uh, Cisco's products, and don't get me wrong, we would love to, you know, invest in companies that are, you know, taking the, you know, contextual, um, you know, patient experience to the next level. But we would also like to see, you know, certain uh, capabilities and offerings built on Cisco's products. So we, the way we would work with you is we would bring you into a discussion with our healthcare leaders, um, you know, explore opportunities, explore use cases, um, you know, regardless of you know, investment opportunities, as long as there are partnership opportunities, we encourage that. Great. Um, yeah, and we and we do that for many of our portfolio. But I think in the areas of telehealth and telebehavioral health, I think that becomes even more of a of a, an area of interest uh, for us. So please, uh, Lord, uh, please contact us. We'd love to uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you are a startup founder, um, a viewer online, uh, please do reach out to us. We will make sure to direct um, your request to. Um, uh, to the relevant people. We, we are seeing a lot of questions online around that. So again, if you're a startup founder, uh, please uh, reach out to us. Um, and so I actually want to touch on, there was a question here around, around our customers, because we did speak a lot about the customer benefits and, um, and the value that we bring to customers. So um, you know, Luca, you spoke with, um, you know, you spoke about the advisory boards. The question here is, out of the thousands of customers that Cisco has, how do you select and prioritize the customers that you want to engage with? So, Luca, I'll, I'll let you answer that, and maybe I'll share some insights yeah, as well. Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Thanks, thanks for asking. So, um, we look for customers that um, you know are first of all forward thinkers. They have to be open to innovating. Uh, they have to be also open to uh, be dealing with startups. Uh, you know, not not all organizations are capable already. To, to engage and deal with startups. <clears throat> Apologies, but if um, I, I want to double click on, on an aspect, so um, that might be interesting. If we talk about personalities that, that we see, um, uh, you know, 
we mentioned we speak to a lot of CIOs, we speak to a lot of CTOs, and, and we see uh, three um, uh, examples of, um, of CIOs personalities. I think I'm gonna use a uh, soccer metaphor as I'm an Italian, uh, we, if you guys allow me. So we see three types, you know, there's the, the defender, and in this category are all those executives that, you know, they're busy fixing their current system, basically kicking problems away and often play catch up with technology. These people usually don't have much time to focus on, on innovation. Uh, the midfielder, uh, these are the ones that uh, realize the, the new role that IT has to embrace. Uh, you know, from a centralized controller uh, and often uh, a bottleneck to, uh, you know, a change agent and enabler within the organization, right? So these people understand that they can't keep up with the business and uh, they, they, they like to, to, to give a lot of autonomy to the business with, of course, maintaining governance and control. And sourcing innovation represents a great part of, of uh, this enablement role that they cover. And uh, the last one is, of course, the forward. Uh, this category are the ones that, you know, really understand and see IT as a driving force uh, of, of innovation rather than, than just an enabler. So, and they see the importance of anticipating the business needs and using really innovation to propel the company to the future. And, uh, you know, following that soccer analogy to, to get the company ready for, for victory. So I would say, Efrat, um, of course, uh, our, our preference would be the, the midfielder and, and the forward type of, of personalities. I don't know if you have anything to add here. I, I can't top your soccer analogy, Luca. I mean, I think it's probably the best <laughs> the best we, we've heard yet. In fact, I think we should coin that term as an industry term. But yeah, but I think I, I really have nothing to add. I mean, I, I think the, the middle fielders and the forwards are really the ones that we, we really try to engage with, the ones that are really pushing the envelope, interested uh, in, in the education piece, but also really in understanding what is happening in the market. Uh, these are typically the ones that are just trying to weather the storm. And they go along with us on that journey of weathering the storm appropriately, right? Because you want to look, you know, when innovation happens and it's growing, you want to look it in the eye instead of it, you know, hitting you in the back of the head. And so those are really the customers that we want to engage with the, with the most, the ones that are willing to take risks, uh, the ones that maybe have uh, programs on bringing startups into their fold, right? The ones that have, yeah. um, you know, processes, right, around onboarding them uh, correctly and, 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 and quickly and, and willing to take that risk on them. Um, you know, I would also say that ones that are willing to share, right, you know, ones that are not secretive uh, about their challenges and about sure. the opportunities that they see in market is something that's really, really uh, important to us. Um, so, you know, you guys, this has been a fascinating conversation. Um, we can talk about this for hours and hours, but fortunately, we don't have all this time uh, for that. There were, you know, a lot of questions around the Q&A, but I think we've hit most of them. So again, you know, startup founders, if you're viewers online, please uh, connect with us. We'll make sure that um, your request and your, um, and your pitch goes to the right uh, people. We may want to have a conversation with you uh, before that, uh, but uh, please get in touch with us. Um, go to sisterinvestments.com for more information. Um, and yeah, um, contact your Cisco account manager, right? Because they can do wonders uh, for you. Yep. So that said, you know, that's all the time we have for today. I just want to deeply thank uh, my peers, uh, my, or my guests, Luca, Thank you very much for having me again. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you, Efra. This was fun. Yeah, this was fantastic. And again, we can talk about this for ages, but uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe, not, maybe next time. You know, it was a really interesting discussion. Uh, thank you for our viewers for uh, for logging in and watching this Cisco Live. I'm sorry, Cisco Chat Live. And uh, hey, see you next time. Bye. Thank you. This big? Nothing less than the speed and dependability of the Cisco network will do. My name is uh, Lucy. Uh, it's uh, my English name. The Chinese name is Xiu Fan. I come from Beijing, China. 
Uh, I have been uh, working in Cisco for 19 years. I'm a sales manager in customer experience team. I think Cisco is really a great company. Cisco support us giving back live days. We have some energy. We we have the eager from the heart. So everybody when they when they know what I'm doing, they, they just uh, raise hand. Lucy, <laughs> give me a chance. I want to join. I can make something happen. I work for the Green and Shine Foundation uh, since six years ago. They had a lot of programs, but the major program is support rural 